Part two of our installation of JASP guide is how to use the Roll App app. So um, what happens sometimes is that people for school may only buy a Chromebook because they're very inexpensive, or maybe you have an iPad, or you have a Surface but don't have a Surface Pro. None of these have real operating systems, meaning they're not Mac, uh, Windows, or um, Linux. Instead, they're the sort of these halfway mobile operating systems and they don't really let you install programs. You can have apps, but maybe not programs. That might make using JASP difficult. So what we've done is we've created a guide for you to use JASP um, with the Open Science Framework and it um, allows you to use things like a Chromebook or some other options. Okay. So this does require you to do a couple of extra steps that you wouldn't have to do if you just found a Windows machine, um, but it does mean that you could use your computer that you bought for school. Okay. So the first thing you will want to do is make an Open Science Framework account. The OSF website is meant to distribute research and um, generally make science more of an open process so we can share um, with each other more but it also will allow you to utilize a lot of the functionality of JASP because they connect to each other. Because the idea is to present your research from JASP to the world. Okay. The next thing you'll have to do is create a place for you to do your homework um, and then connect it to Rollapp. So let's start with how to make an OSF account. All of these things are free. Um, <clears throat> so what I wanna do is go to osf.io, so I can click on the link to go to the website. I already have an account, so I'm gonna walk you through the pages as if you don't have an account, um, but you would click sign up. It's coming back over here. So we would click the sign up button in the top right hand corner, fill in all of your information. So your name, your email, uh, create a password, and click create a free account below. Um, so you might have to say I'm not a robot, but either way your account is free. you will get a confirmation email after you create your account to verify your email, basically. Once you get that email, you might remember you might have to check if you're using uh, Outlook, um, both the junk and clutter, but generally it does go straight to your regular email. And then um, click on the link that's, uh, that says confirm my account and you'll have created it out. Okay. And so we've also included the help guide from OSF's website if you have trouble um, getting this set up. Okay. Now, there's going to be some weird terminology here, but this is called forking. So what you're going to do is go to our website where we host all of these guides and these videos and all this stuff and click on that. Um, you do not have to have an account to view this, but we've just made one. But either way, what you'll do is you'll see um, the all of the materials that we've created including PowerPoints, these how-to guides, etc. And then we've got some links for you to help you understand what's going on. But to make this work, you're gonna click this icon here. Um, it will require you to log in, uh, but this is the fork icon. Okay. So let me go back here. What the heck is fork? Fork means make your own copy. Create a fork in the road is kind of the terminology here. So we're gonna create our own copy of all of the materials. So when you do that, it's gonna include all the like links and stuff that I have here um, on the wiki page to help you link back to our original one. And it's gonna copy over all of our materials. When you go and edit any of this stuff, you're editing your own. So it makes a complete copy, but doesn't mess up our stuff. So you'll have your own copy. Okay. So you click your fork icon. It may be different here, depending on how many people have forked our project. Okay, so you're making a copy you click fork this project and then you'll see this little message your fork is being created you'll receive an email it's pretty instantaneous so just refresh you might have to log out log back in but now when you go to your OSF homepage, you should see this fork okay and so it'll say fork of undergraduate stats you click on that link right and then you'll see your own version of the original OSF page and this part I can't show you so I would sign in and then once I sign in normally, um, I come to this home page, okay, your dashboard. You'll only have the one thing. Okay. I have a bunch. Right. And so you'll have this sort of thing, fork. Okay. 
you would click on that link and to take you in to the page. Okay, one thing to notice here is that I have this set to private so people can't see it. You wanna leave that set as private um, so that you don't share your homework with everybody uh, to kind of keep yourself from um, accidentally doing plagiarism. Okay. Um, another thing is you'll see that where it's forked from, but like all these links will still take you back to my original page. Now you can edit them if you want um, by clicking on the edit button, it's not necessary, um, but you're not gonna be editing my stuff. Okay. But if you're trying to remember, where was that, where were those files? Or where was that video that told me how to do this? You can click on YouTube tutorials and it will take you back to our link. Okay. Now, on this, all this forked stuff is my own new copy of it. Um, it is my stuff now, so I can edit this um, at will. So it doesn't, you won't mess up anything um, that we have in our file for other people to copy. All right, so keep this set as private. Um, it's currently grayed out because it's private. And since we're doing our homework, you'll probably wanna leave it private so you don't share your homework with other people. Okay. How to add files. So this is still like within OSF here. You can click on the files link. Okay. Let's say your teacher gives you some homework and you need to, um, you need to uh, upload a data set that they gave you. And when you get to this page, it can be a little confusing um, what you're supposed to do. The main thing key here is to click on the words OSF storage, and then you'll get the icons that you're used to. So you could create a folder that says homework. Okay. And then now you have a folder where you can upload your homework. So you can click on that folder and up click upload, to upload a file. You can drag and drop. Um, we could pick a regular a file here to use. I won't do this right now. You can delete things. You can download everything as a zip file. You can rename things. So this works kind of like as an online storage, much like OneDrive or um, Dropbox, but then the storage is unlimited. So you can put things on, you can put all of your homework on here without worry. All right, so we did all of that. We went through this stuff. So this is kind of up to you how you want to organize your stuff. If you have a CSV file for your homework, you can upload it here, okay? Any work that you save from JASP will also be stored over in this area. Okay. Now the magic. So we're gonna go to JASP's website. And this will be a little confusing, but what you wanna do is click um, download, even though we're not downloading it. And they tell you a little bit about their most current release. We're gonna scroll past all this and go down here to um, run JASP in your browser. Click launch online. And then you wait. Okay. Now let's make this full screen here. All right, this is JASP. So we're now actively using the program. The, the key, why, the reason we made this OSF account is to um, be able to upload files. So some of our how-to guides do not are use uh, examples that are embedded in the newest JASP uh, 0.9, but you'll still be able to do all of, um, all of everything that we show you in these guides. You just maybe not be able to use our example. Okay. So computer doesn't really do anything good for you here, but click OSF, and this is where you'll log into your OSF account that you just made. If I can remember my password. That's the tricky spot. There we go. So once you click, once you get this part linked, you'll only have that one fork option. Okay. Um, if you don't see anything here, uh, what the issue is, is um, on the OSF page, so I'm gonna go back to the main page here we figured this out later, is it has to be listed here as a project um, or it won't show it to you. So um, we set up our main page as a project so when you fork it, it should still be a project. But if you don't see anything in this spot here, that's one of the issues. So we would click on that folder 
to open it or double click. Okay. Double click on OSF storage. Okay. And then now you can go into that folder we just made for homework. Um, the how to guides folder doesn't have any documents, in, uh, any uh, data files in it, so you don't see it. We're going to click on chapter PowerPoints just so we can open one of the files we've got stored in here. Okay, and normally it shows us the CSVs. So what should happen is we've gone through all this stuff. We logged in, double clicked on the file, clicked on folder, and you should see now these CSVs. Um, and the how-to guides, and this may be an issue with my internet um, because we're not seeing everything here. Or an issue with the app since it just crashed, but hopefully yours will not crash. Let me try launching that one more time. Okay, so I've launched the app, which hopefully it should not be this slow. Uh, I have pretty crappy internet tonight, so that's my main issue. So I'm gonna click files, OSF, I'm gonna log in. Let's try this bad boy again. So we'll click on the fork, OSF storage. Still looks like it's acting a little funny. And normally you would see files here. Okay, let's uh, chalk this one up to my like pretty poor connection. And let's see if we can find a different project maybe. This one, OSF, manuscript files. Eh, eh, okay, this one's working for reasons unknown. Um, and so it will load the file for me here in JASP. Okay. Now, this did a p work one day, so I'm not entirely sure why it's not working now, but it has worked in the past where it should connect. If you have issues with it, you can always leave us, drop us a comment and see. We'll see what, what's going on. Okay. So you double click on a CSV file to open it, and now you can do all everything for the rest of the guides that we have. So let's say you've like finished your homework and you want to save your homework. So let's say I did something with this file. I ran, um, let's say, a descriptives analysis on mean one. And I'd want to save this file file, this, this entire document. Um, so we'll get into this in the next couple of videos, but when you save a JASP file, .jasp, it includes the, all of the analyses, so it's data and analyses all together. You can also copy this homework answer and cut and paste that into Word. But the nice thing about saving the .jasp file is one, if your instructor wants it, you can give it to them, but two, it will save the analyses that you ran. So if your instructor is like, this looks really wrong, can you show me what you did? You just open your JAS file and boop, there it is. But um, if you're just simply wanting to copy and paste for the, you know, a graph or your test or something, you could do that directly without saving. All right, now if I want to save that, save this file, do file, save as. I'm not gonna stick it in this folder because I think the person involved in that project would be very confused, but you'll see that I have it saved as a .jasp. I'm gonna put that in my um, fork that we created, and I'm just gonna hit save. Okay. And so it's now saved as means and standard deviations I created. When I go back over to my OSF account, click on files, it should now have that file saved. So my uh, .js file is saved. Get this, it's gonna be even more awesome. You click on that 
and OSF natively will read JASP files and show you the results page. Okay. So you can download the JASP file to maybe give to your instructor or whatever you want to do with it, or you can just look at your results um, and you can copy them from here as well. Oops, I made it angry. Um, but that's the nice thing is that it actually reads JASP files. So you can see your results without having to uh, reload it into JASP. Now, if you want to recreate the analysis, you do have to reload it. Um, but let's say we want to reload this file. So I'm going to close this data set. Okay. Go back to OSF here. Now I can reload this exact file. Okay. And when you reload it, there's my analysis again. And when we click on the analysis, I get how I ran it. And so um, that's how we uh, use JASP with OSF together. You can download the file, you can view the files. So this just talks a little bit more about what we just did and allows you to use this on things like an iPad um, or um, mainly for Chromebooks, those sort of um, nice machines that are really good for using uh, Word, but they don't really have any good options for these other programs. Okay. So let us know if you have any questions. That's how you use JASP and Rollapp together. One last thing, quick PSA, turns out that I like moved a folder accidentally. And so what you will see when you fork our, our project is it should, you'll click on fork, click on OSF storage. You'll see the how to guides. So the things I'm working with now, and then when you click on that, you should see CSVs. I accidentally moved that folder to Mars, I found it, I moved it back. Um, but when you click on, when you create your fork, that folder will be there for you. And includes all of the example guide, um, C CSVs that we created for, as part of our guides that we'll use in these videos. And then any um, files that you use that you maybe want to upload to homework will also be there for you to use. So that was not my internet although it is crappy, uh, was a accidental button click on my part. And so you will, that is what you will see. Um, when you're done with these, you will want to click file and then close. If you have data open, um, that'll make it less cranky when you go to close it, but you can just say leave on leave page and be done with the app. All right, really that time done with roll app, move on to part two so you can learn how to use histograms.